Let's see her then. 450 Race Recap, brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Always well hung, just like Cameron McAdoo. Sackadoo. Sackadoo. Sackers. Sackers. And McAdoo's, I'm telling you, Stop. man. Stop. I can't. What a not. fucking unit. <sighs> Ma- McAdoo is working with some A-kit. That That's hammer, what. dude. Just pounded nails. That thing is a fork tube. It's <laughs> not right. even A-kit, bro. That's just work suspension. <sighs> Okay. Oh, no, it works for sure. I can give you guys three options to start with. Is Ooh. it, it Kashima coated? Okay. Yes, it's Kashima coated. Love it. Do you We're guys want to talk? Slick stiction. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Great. All right. Let's. Where all are right. we starting? You guys want to talk? Tomac winning. Are we going to talk about all this stuff eventually? Anyway. Yes. Okay. But I'm just giving you options oh, to where start. Where we want to start? Tomac oh. winning. Okay. Red Cross flags. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or Barsha's center punch. <laughs> Let's go. Let's give. Let's let's talk about Eli. Give the man some credit. Okay. Let's talk yeah. about Eli. Well, Tomac goes one one one, kind of. Kind of. <laughs> let's Ish. say one. Let's go say one two one. So, Asterix. <laughs> so does that count as a sweep? The second sweep of history. Oh so. my god. Know, does it? Third. It's the third because he did it, did it or Kenny did it and then Jet did it and now. Oh okay. Well, let's, 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 let's go. Let's go one two one. Let's just say one two one. No no. I'm, I'm, gonna say, I'm, 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 I'm just reading the results. It says uh, one one one. I'm gonna say one two. Look one. in in thirty years when we look back, we're we're That's not true. gonna remember the fucking. We're not gonna remember. Here, yeah. So true. it's gonna be it's gonna be man. Tomac swept. Okay, that's fine. Right. Tomac swept. He brought his broom. Anybody watch the press conference? <laughs> nope. No, but I've heard, oh I've, I've heard, heard about the heard the stuff. secret ankle, ankle injury. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I mean, why why did you just go like that? Why did you just go? Let me just go back to my holster coat reload rant last week. Can we just get a Fucking injury oh, report. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. I I interpreted that wrong. I thought that you by doing this. Usually, when people do this, they like say bullshit. Uh, no, well, it's well, it's supposedly it, legit. I mean, it came out of his mouth at the press conference. And also, I was about yeah, to say, why is it so far after the fact that it comes out? Like, hey, you're sucking dick. Everybody's calling you the old guy. Say, hey, I hurt my ankle. Because I don't think Boom, he, I don't think he lie. I don't think he lie. Makes excuses like that, man. That's one weird thing about this. Sport. It's not an excuse though. I mean, I think to him, though, he would think that people would perceive it that way. God, I feel weird being like the Eli Tomac guy these days. It's a really weird position for me to be in, because I am not an Eli Tomac guy. Oh, yeah, well, here give it about con- six years, he'll be the Jet guy. Hold on, hold <laughs> on. You, I here, come, here, come, here come the, man, that guy in the corner is a real Tomac homer. <laughs> Everybody, dude, it is so weird. Everybody thinks that, but you can definitely tell that those are the new people, because all you have to do is go back to 2021. I know. And you could watch I the show, know. and like people would know that I am not a Tomac homer. It's yeah, just one of those yeah, things yeah. that you have to appreciate the man. The internet's full of cynics, right? So oh, for sure. Somebody can get, get for the sure. shit on you, they're going to. For sure. Look, Look, for me, like the sport part of it is interesting because for moto, it's like top secret, right? But Which for like I play, like, for all who don't know who I am, I play minor pro hockey, and you have to fucking disclose that. Even if it's just upper body injury, lower body injury, you have to at least disclose that. Uh, Including on the lineup sheet too. So like, if I'm healthy scratch, you have to, like, it has to be shared throughout. The, not even just the teams, but the league too, right? Well, it's not like that for Moto at all. No, we yeah, are. The- it, it'll be interesting to see if we do get an injury report or something like that with all this sports betting and stuff that's starting to come into the sport. Where I think legally they're going to have to start reporting this stuff. Let's say we are the only professional sport that doesn't mandate you giving an update on your guy if you're being. In- I mean, even Formula One, they make everybody like. Well, I think it was last year. No, just recently. Carlos Sainz, they were at the second round in, I think it was Jeddah, and he had been struggling for like the whole entire week. They didn't know what it was. They thought it was just flu symptoms. This motherfucker goes out for qualifying, struggling, struggling, struggling. They couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure it out. Come to find out that his appendix was about to burst. Mm. And then I they pulled him, this. and then they gave the Formula 2 kid, the reserve driver, Ali Behrman, a shot. But they were like, yeah. But they went into the weekend, though, going... They and they didn't know what was wrong with him, but they still yeah. went into the weekend going, yeah, like Carlos has in, like he has something going on with him. Like we don't know what it is, but he has something going on with him. And it was insignificant because they didn't even have like tests to prove anything was wrong with him, but they still had to let everybody know that something was wrong with mm-hmm. him. Come to find out, luckily he went to the hospital when he did. Yeah, it was super sketchy. It's <laughs> hard it's, to tell. It's really it hard to tell. It happened to Alex Albon last year at, at, at um, one of the Italian races at Faenza. Like he had his appendix, like it burst. But the point is, is that they went into the weekend going, we don't know what's wrong with him, but we have to tell you that something is actually yeah. wrong with him. We're the only sport where it's not mandated to do that. Uh, yeah, there, there's stuff like that that's wrong with our sport. I mean, like, 
you can knock yourself silly in the first qualifying practice, not even know who you are, and you're allowed to race. So, or you mean like are Jordan? You, because, or you mean like Jordan Smith? Like wads of shit and clearly those has a guys all know in how to cheat. Report, I'm going to ask you about that. Those guys all know yeah. how to cheat the concussion test. Like, I don't right. know because I've done the concussion test for for moto and for hockey now, and it's not that fucking easy to cheat it. Like you have a baseline. I you don't know, man. You, you, I've seen some hits, easy. and I've seen guys get up and still race. That should he watched Kev, he watched Kev do it's it. It's not easy to cheat it in the middle of the race, yeah. but it's but it's easy, or it's not easy to cheat it outside the race. In the middle of the race, it's easy. You okay? Yeah. Yeah. Duh. Why are you looking over that way? I mean, yeah. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get well, my like, bike. It's like the whole McAdoo thing. Yeah. 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 I know. Oh yeah, you're talking McAdoo, about McAdoo or how the hell was Zach Bell supposed to race all those years ago? Yeah. He was clearly. Oh, out. you mean when he almost died? Yeah. yeah he brought, was clearly out. They brought they brought this up. Uh, somebody did somewhere, and they're like, it's literally going to take a catastrophe before it changes, and they're not. I feel re- like right now. They don't have. They can't be fucking around with shit with everything they're dealing with. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at what they did last week. Jordan Smith should not have no. been on that track. No, like I don't give no. a shit if he just knocked the wind out of himself. He knocked it out of himself enough that it restricted oxygen to his brain for a second, and he was not in the right mind. He crashed three more times and he yanked on the track and didn't even look. So what? Is, so what happens? Style. What happens when he does that and then takes that? They talked about this. I don't remember where I was listening to it. What happens when he does that and he takes out kitchen? Then what? I don't disagree with you on this, but who the fuck is he, whoever the AMA guys that makes a call? Who the fuck are they to tell me that I'm not going to go back out and race? Because if, if for me, if I crash real hard most of the time, they're you know. the people that the lawyers come to see you and then they sue because of that, or they sue, or Kitchen's yeah. lawyers sue fuck them the because lawyers. their problem they is they got pull him off the track. That and everything in America is ruined by our lawyers. But that's but that's what's going to happen because it, it's a it's a. This is what what it turns into is a real safety. Like Liability. I agree with you because I did the same thing playing hockey, and there's many times I look back now, and go, yeah, you're man, fine. when I smashed that dude and I saw birds, I probably had a concussion and should not have played the rest of the week, but we did. It was the '90s, whatever. So anyway, however, in today's day and age, and especially with the lawsuits we know are going on right now with the Alpine Stars Medical Unit and Feld, I don't know they're gonna sue. Brian yeah. Moreau. Brian, Brian Moreau. Moreau. That is why when someone like Forkner crashes, they will not show it again until until they know he's okay, okay, etc. He's trying to come back. Like he's gonna race by the end. Tell me the story. I don't know about this. Brian Moreau. Do you remember him? He He came. He's from Europe. Hot shoe. Made it like four or five laps in those first French ruins it. (laughs) Made it. Well, he made it for four or five laps into the into the. Was that the TL? What team was he on? The TLD TLD team. He's on the ground, and the medics dragged him off the track, and now he's paralyzed Mm. instead of stabilizing. Because they literally like dragged him. Uh Oh, Uh -oh. that's worst case. Yeah. Yep. So, and and that's what we're gonna get to with the concussion stuff too. And everybody's talked about it. Is it? It'll take a catastrophe, but it will take something literally like what Smith did last week, where he renders himself silly there and then i got my reload ran my jumps on the jumps on the track and literally causes someone to get hurt and then things will change now how do you police that who knows because how do you judge how do you judge it at, is it when you come off the bike i mean like there's so many variables to this that's tricky but at some point something like that's going to happen especially the way we keep seeing things go and then it's going to be like okay what do we do now? Yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times Kennard ro- what like ragged out himself into the yeah. ground. Yeah. He never should have been back on the bike. Yeah. It was very clear, but they were just like, hey, whatever. Well, yeah, I mean, well, it's, it's, it's back Cameron, to Tomac though. It's Cameron <laughs> back, McAdoo back to too. The only reason the McAdoo thing didn't go any farther than it did is because he took out Chris Blows and not somebody on a factory team. Yeah. He takes out somebody on a factory team. We have a different rule in place mm-hmm. already. The thing is, for me, is two things. For me, like as a racer, I crash my fucking brains out all the time. Right, that's kind of my mo, but. <laughs> For the amount of times that I actually hit my head and rung my bell and I actually got concussed, it's like a tenth of the times. I crash and hit my head all the time, but the amount of times you actually get concussed is not very often. When you get up, you know what's going on, or you know that you don't know what's going on, right? Most racers, if you're not gonna, if you're like, oh, kind of woozy, you're probably not gonna go fucking go back out there. But yeah, you and me, you're gonna go back out there when you got tens of thousands of dollars you, on the line. You yeah. and you and me also know this though that I mean. We can, I mean, I don't want to bring up depressing shit, but we also lost, you know, a very good person, Josh Lichtel, yep. with a concussion. And you I don't know. think it was a concussion that got him, though. I'm pretty sure he was his. No, he had a lot of stuff going on, but he definitely had a concussion when he hit the ground because even Dave, like, 
I don't know if the, the story of like up. him coming down the short shoot and he's going like this and he can't hold his head up and like Dave to this day like wishes he would have pulled him off the track. Yeah, I and I think that like made it worse. I'm not saying he that was what did it. We all yeah. know that's not what did it. But I think that that like definitely didn't help the situation of what happened later on that day. Naturally, right? Yeah. The other thing is, is I got to mention that I think this morning I saw Fly has an ad where they have sensors in their helmets now. And yes. it goes Bluetooth to your phone or whatever. Yes. Which soon will be the bar pad on these electric bikes, right? Well, yeah. the sensors... So like formula, we have, we already formula have S too, yeah, and it will monitoring brain waves. Hey, if no. you crash, it sends an allergic, uh, yeah. an emergency alert to mm-hmm. a family member, or loved one, oh, or something wow. like that. Yeah, if you're so out like, riding by I yourself, like that. Yeah. it probably is going to be wonky and dumb for a while. But the theory behind it is cool for not only the racing and like keeping, I mean, like monitoring people that crash and like, like right now it's just gonna, hey they crash, but pretty soon it'll probably be where you can actually tell with analytics how hard they crash or what actually yeah. like torsion of it or whatever. But the mm-hmm. other thing is, is when I grew up. I practice more than anybody I know, and it's because I practiced in the back fucking pasture at the house alone every day. Mm-hmm. And when I was out there riding by myself every day, most of the time, nobody would know if I went down. Yeah. Well, right. this is this part of it's cool. I like that. Although I wouldn't carry my phone with me. I didn't even have a phone back then. <laughs> well, you don't have to carry your phone, though. It just, it, you, it's synced in with your phone, I believe, right? Yeah, you don't have like to that. carry the phone. I don't, know all, right? I don't know all the specifics. I don't know if you have to have Either way, it's cool technology. Look into it, people. Maybe Fly will sponsor this show. Probably Maybe. not. <laughs> I never wrote, wrote fly gear, get... but I love those guys in general. Max was that guy back in the day. Those yeah. guys were great. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, off topic, but a lot of interesting things going on at WPS right now, hmm. business-wise. All right, back to Tomac winning. <laughs> okay, uh, Anybody got now anything? let's restart the 450 race recap. <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, so let me ask you guys this. Yep. Is there an asterisk? Yeah. I mean, no, no not in my mind. Like, there shit happens. For the moto, that's it. Shit happens. Like that's all. That's all part of it. Like we can go. We can go through the history of a lot of people that have won races due to other things or unforeseen shit. And if you want to, if you want to say like, oh, you can this, put an asterisk, fine. This has as it's big of big an one. asterisk as most of Ryan Dungey's titles. Nah. Yep. Hundred percent. Outside of what was the one? What was the one year he was dominant? Twenty sixteen. Yep. That one. Does oh, it. The Travis brought a spoon today, didn't he? Has an asterisk, <laughs> dude. I'm fine. Wait till we get down to. I mean, I, I mean, I've calmed down. <laughs> look, you, you still, you still, you still gotta, you still gotta. Okay, if you want to talk about what it Ra- happened, racing's racing. Yes. Okay. That's if you want, and if you want to talk but about the second, the no, second no, main. No, no, nope. I want to talk about Eli Tomac winning and the asterisk next to it because. I don't put an asterisk next to it. Like, the one moto I give him an asterisk. He put. He put six seconds on him in two and a half fucking laps. How much more of an asterisk do you fucking want? Did you also, like, are listen, you serious did you right also now? listen to him talk after the main? He like, put six seconds on him in two and a did half Did you also listen laps. to him talk after the main, talking about he knew what he was doing wrong where Jet was pulling on him? Uh, uh, so how do you know he wasn't going to come into the third main and well, figure it out? Why didn't he pull back within six seconds? I mean, because if I figure of, it out, I'm going to do it and fucking that's make easy. it uh, laugh. I, I, that's easier said I than will done. stand up on the other side here and kind of piggyback Justin over okay, here. Okay, go ahead. I'll fucking argue this all day. But Dude, this is, Eli this is, is the kind of guy that's going to go out there and he's going to learn what's going on and he's going to sit in the truck Chase and visualize Saxton it last year, and Houston. think about it. Has he been learning what's going on all year when he was... No, because he's been getting bad starts. He's been. That's the first time he's actually, I think, been with him for a lap, three laps to figure and it out. He did, dude, and, and that was instead of crazy pulling, to see because he hung with him. And then guess what? And I also it could still well, didn't fucking. And I, I, was, I think it, I think he was like, I'm gonna go back to the truck. I got another race because his and bike I'm is handling like it. shit. I go along with David Villeman. Like Villeman has been very vocal about this. Tomac's bike, that thing, and maybe it has something to do with his ankle injury, not having the base. Because obviously we all know Eli, very upper body dominant, a lot of energy through the front end, but you build your energy through your lower body. If he doesn't have that stability and that flexibility, it's going to hinder him. And I watched that, and we all know Jack, you know, the talent and the bike, he can get in and out, turn down, not as low as Cooper, but close. And I'm watching Eli, and I know Eli has always kind of ridden like this, but lap, like Saturday seems super exaggerated. It's like the front end looks even softer. How much he had to go to the outside just to keep his momentum up, and we all know Eli's like a clutch destroyer, but when you can hear how hard he's dragging the clutch through the corners and in between the short shoots on the TV broadcast, like this is not like a Barsha thing where Barsha is just over rev. Like I could just hear every moment. Like I could turn my head away and I would know where Eli, like, oh yeah, that's Eli. Like he's just in there. Brruh, 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 and yeah. I'm like, Eli's always do, done Can you that. do that again? No. Oh. But come on, man. I just, 
I look at it and I go, that was a typical Eli moment. And even Eli's like, yeah, like, I don't know if I'm back or whatever. And everybody's going to say, well, you know, this doing that, sec- like what happened with Jet? Fine. Yeah. Jet beat him second main. Like he didn't say otherwise. He didn't say, oh yeah, he got lucky, this and that. But we don't know what would have happened in that third main. Would have Jet have beat him? Maybe. Would he have not? We don't know. We're but never going to. he gonna fucking know. didn't, right? But he didn't. But he didn't. <laughs> and, and we'll get into the Red Cross thing too, because yeah, I have, we'll I have a lot I got, I got some opinions on that. But it's just. It's it's getting to the point that it's just super annoying that every time Jet says something really really good, we have to take away when somebody else does something good because Jet just he won. Eli wrote great last night. That's the best I've seen him ride for that sure. Is, and and if is. this ankle thing is is this legit, year. if this ankle, yeah, he's not. He's but not. not which ankle was it? Was it the same ankle as the Achilles side? Or That's a good question. That's a great question. Because if it is, yeah. that definitely makes that it even makes worse. Sense. Yeah. yeah and he like said it affected his balance. Which, and it, yeah, and he's and he's let's let's not get it twisted, Eli. This is not the was last. Was that an ankle pun? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is dude. I didn't even think about it as it came out of my mouth. Uh, this is not Eli of last year. Like even Eli at his best this year, like didn't has not even looked as good as he did last year. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah fine. Jet beat him. Cool. That's what Jet has done all entire year. But you can't take it away from what Eli did because you still got to be there. If I if we're gonna put an asterisk next to every time somebody won a race because somebody else did something, then you know what. I'm giving my boy Stu 100 fucking wins because I could put an asterisk next to a bunch of people when Stu should have won, but because of unforeseen shit happened. It is what it is. Like, Yeah, I mean, I guess. It's a yeah, lot of Chad stu- Reed got an asterisk in uh, St. Louis back uh, when Pastrana yeah, a, yeah. yeah. a lot of Stu stuff was more self-inflicted than... Well, what wasn't self-inflicted outside of the medic thing, but also that was self-inflicted on Jet's part, too. I'm not talking too. the medic thing. What are you talking about, then? As to why Jet lost last night? How do you... Are you talking? You mean Saturday? Are you talk about the Barsha thing too, and we'll get into that. Yeah, Saturday, whatever. Sorry. Okay, wrong we'll get into that. I'll dissect that. Yeah. One okay, for you. that's fine. Here's we, the thing. We'll, we'll, we'll get into it, but I'm just saying, like, I that mean, there is a big fucking thing. It well, wasn't his fault. Either way, boys, Eli Tomac won another he did. race. He did. And welcome back. Welcome back. Like we need the sport needed that. Hey, three I hope right here. he wins. What? Three. I hope oh, he yeah, wins right here. Denver. That's for Tomac right here. I want to see it. Poetic justice. Him winning Denver after what happened last year. I think oh, it'd yeah. be great. It would. Well, okay, we can use the asterisk. He's got to win a real race, not a triple crown. Oh, oh God, man, here we go. <laughs> here we go. So, but no, that whatever. was, you know, take take Jed out of the equation. He was beating all the guys he needed to beat last year kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, Webb goes 5-6-2 for second. So what's the over-under on him actually knowing there was a triple crown series championship? Doesn't give won? two fucks. I didn't, and I thought he was surprised when he got this trophy. I don't, some... I don't know. I, at least they got a legit trophy now. Yeah, the trophy was actually legit, not a Salvation Army trophy. I said, oh, that, geez. I said this Saturday night after in the race reaction of, I wish they would make a bigger deal out of this, and I wish they would do this at three specific rounds. Yeah, yeah. Like, do it at Detroit glendale st louis every they, year they, they no matter to, they what used to and then put some money behind it dude like if you oh, have yeah. a, if you have a little series within a series it doesn't have to be a lot because you only got to do it for 450 <laughs> I, I would love to ask coop like was there a bonus to your triple no, crown first thing i thought about yeah. was one, i was wondering if there was a payout hang on we'll fire off a dm do you remember do you remember the first year <laughs> they did it bond? when they when they got up at the end of the at the end of the first triple crown set there uh the first year and they were like oh you're triple crown champion eli tomac and he's like what yeah, <laughs> and they handed do him the, that little trophy. It's it's like the thing when they do like their version of the manufacturers like standings. Like nobody. I wish it. that was a fucking real thing. This isn't too. this isn't Formula One, man. Like I like the direction we're headed. I like, I like it. it. I like it. But here's the thing: if they if they're follow because they're following that model of the open wheel world. NASCAR does it too, right? I don't know. Cole, did they do a manufacturer's shit? I don't even think so. I don't think so. But Formula One does. Here's the thing: if you're gonna follow that, and I don't, I I highly doubt it, but I might be wrong. Uh, if you're gonna do that you need to pay out those teams or those manufacturers at the end of the year for being the best. Because if you're just saying, oh, you guys won, and then that's the end of it, uh, even though... Are you Instagram DMing? Yeah. DM ML and see if there's a payout for manufacturers. I was about to say, because the Formula One teams get out, and they're never going to get this much money, but they get a fuck ton of money. Yeah. For the man. So if you're if you're going to follow that, then cool. Like, I'm cool with that. Mm. But if you're just doing it to be like, oh, you're Kawasaki was the best, or oh, Honda was the best. I think that's more valuable than money. I really do. (sighs) Ah, man. I... Ask Ricky Johnson. Ask Ricky Carmichael when they when they win, who's who's selling on the Monday? Yeah. I, I'm just if you're gonna follow that that method, then you need to pay the you need to pay the teams. The manufacturers cup needs to be and and they've started pushing it. Hopefully they'll get better and better with it. I, I have 
hopes because we are making strides and improvements. But if you're going to push the manufacturer's cup, then it needs to be pushed more than a little graphic at the end of the day of like, oh, yeah. well, here's the manufacturer's points. It needs to be explained too. Yeah. I mean, I don't know with Formula One because I don't watch enough ra- enough actual races. Like I watch the highlights mm. to know if they explain it every race as to how exact. Uh, that's a bit easier. Too. They explain it. They, <laughs> because they don't... there's not two classes yeah. and stuff, but. They don't exp- they don't go into detail at the actual the broadcast, but when they do like their reactions and they yeah. go through the weekend, their like weekend wrap up, they talk about all that shit because it's a big deal. Yeah, because like every weekend is a big deal because there's millions and millions, millions of, of dollars, dollars on the yeah. line for these teams. Like that's how those teams like how do you think Haas keeps going to the races? Yeah, because if they get like eight, they get like thirty five million dollars. Well, there you go. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not for, not for eighth, but they like dude the like Red Bull and shit. They get like sixty seventy million dollars for being wow. top of manufacturer. Dude, Ferrari gets a what is it called a legacy oh, yeah, yeah. or whatever. They get like twenty million dollars a year because they've been in F one since the first since it started. So really? they get an automatic twenty million dollar like payout dude, you, every year. Back from to F1. the Moto stuff. Even the last place team gets like ten million. Yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why the manufacturers' cup is like a big deal for them because it's it, almost a bigger you know, deal than the individual drivers' yeah, cup. Yeah. yeah, I just love that they and I think maybe it'll start changing and we need to celebrate guys getting top tens and top yeah. fives and so so yeah, my, every time you don't win, everybody's like, oh, what a terrible day! It's like fuck you. He's fifteenth in the the in the world and yeah. did a pretty yeah. good job. Like, give me but a break. it's it's mm. just the way our society. My is. thing is with the triple crown stuff is like if they were to do it at the same three rounds every year or whatever, and actually really promote it as a series within a series, I think it would be great because mm. like for guys like us who want to go to races but can't go to all of them, like okay, cool, we could set out to go really cover essentially those that that series mm-hmm. within the series you know and be it all three of those as opposed to just like oh well we'll go to this one and we'll go to this one and oh this one happens to be a triple crown like no just make it the same rounds every year make it a series within a series because they there's so many stipulations they have to have like the pits can't be too far away they want to in dome yeah, yeah, yeah. like all this stuff it's tricky as a mechanic and it's like okay great cool that's awesome then just pick three spots that we go to basically every year and that's it. And just know those and are the just triple crowns. Because w- people will specifically go to those, and people will specifically go to other rounds. And they, yeah, they'll specifically simple. plan their trips because they know they're triple crowns. Yeah. I wish we had the same shit in outdoors, man. Because like you go over to like the UK series, and they have like four different professional series within their series, and then that's why you have like all the like the Dutch championship, the ADAC championship. Like I wish that we had instead of just Supercross, and then obviously Arena Cross is kind of coming back, and then outdoors, we had multiple series within series. So I got a question. We could get into this in the halftime report because I got all sorts of stuff. Well, re- related to that real quick. So, oh, we got a, we got an answer back already. We did. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me let me finish this. The triple crown format. So the triple crown itself. I'm only aware of horse racing that has a triple crown. What else is a comparable? A triple crown? Yeah. Uh, I mean, like three races in one, or just calling or, it, or, a, or the mini series in that. So the triple crown, I'm only aware of. Uh, we did it racing. in outdoors. 07, 08. There was the monster triple crown. Redbud was around. It was oh high yeah, point, and Red it was Bud sports and, though. No, and, um, other sports, I think. No. Anything comparable? Or are we you know were they the were they hype it up and make it like a prestigious related? thing? Motorsports um, related? I don't think so. Not that I know of. Not I don't think I so. I think yeah. motorsports has ever really kind of well, gone out. What it, it's not a triple crown, but what's the big three twenty four hour racing? Le Mans, oh yeah, Daytona, Le Mans, Daytona, Sebring. Sebring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But those are but there's twenty four and then the twelve. Sebring's the twelve hour. Is that a three race series that kind of thing? I mean, yeah, it kind of is, but like it it kind. It kind of is, and it kind of isn't. It's, that it's isn't. like a thing for like drivers of like winning the big three in a year. Yeah, well, it's a big deal to them, but like to everybody else, they're kind of just like, yeah, yeah. it's just another fucking race. I don't know. For horse racing, it's a huge thing. Yeah, because you have the Preakness, you have um, Kentucky Derby, Kentucky Derby, and then what's the other one? The yeah. Downs, or what? Belmont. Something. Belmont. Yeah, Belmont. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So like, I I think it would be cool again if we hyped it up and we truly made it a series within a series. Again, you do the same thing you're doing right now. Pay points. To the finishers for the overall yeah, thing or but whatever. Get, give the guy a bonus yeah. and more than a Salvation Army trophy. Because if you do this, okay, then that then that allows them to go back to sponsors and be like, okay, well, if I win this, what's my bonus for that, you know? Yeah, yeah when you're negotiating so, contracts and stuff, which, yeah. Which I'm sure all these guys are, if they haven't already, if their deal's still going, I'm sure they've renegotiated contracts for winning a Triple Crown race. Much like moto wins or yeah, something. Yeah, I, I, and you know, if I'm like Levi Kitchen, I just went off sweeping a, a triple mm-hmm. crown. I use that as leverage going into a deal By for the a way. 450 ride. Like, yeah, hey, we'll get to it. The two fifty. We'll get to it. Yeah. We'll get. Uh, last thing I'll say on that is, is that could you imagine though if they start to do this? Because obviously we know how we have SMX, and then if they were to do something like that, all the guys like Eli, Mookie, Christian, Craig, Ando, Barsha, 
that have just been around for all these years. And then now all of a sudden, like, oh, now you guys are trying to get it figured your shit out. And now you're putting all these different series and, you know, all this different money. Yeah. Now that we're on our way out. Yeah. Like, well, really? Cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure Ricky would be stoked, too. Stuff happens. Fuck yeah. With Ricky, the way Ricky structured his contracts, he'd be like, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, anything else on Coop's ride, or that was just kind of Coop's triple crown ride? I mean, that was just... And he was really good. This, I mean, he was good the whole entire night, but, like, that third main, like... And we get to it when we talk about Chase. Yeah. I mean, dude, he got around Chase pretty quickly and then dropped him. So uh, yeah, he was we'll kind of Chase. making some progress on Eli and Jet in that first one, too. Yeah, he everybody, was. Everybody talks to me about how oh, I don't like Cooper Webb and this and that. The guy's a fucking saber-toothed tiger. That guy is awesome. He right? also yeah. gets, yeah. you know, his arms Down pump up like morning wood. <laughs> Down to eight. The points. We'll get to that. Morning wood, dude. Morgan, morning Morgan. wood, bro. Morning, morning wood. wood. If morning wood could. Solid, morning wood could. Solid eight on the morning wood? Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, I don't think his... I don't... Stop. Yeah. Just, <laughs> you, you know anyway, how I was going with it? it. All right. Stop uh, it. So Hunter goes eight, two, four for third. Oh, you want to talk and, about getting a gimme? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, that he, was he a gimme. He didn't back away from that at all. Yo. He's like, well, I kind of got that one, but yeah. like, I'll take it. Well, good. We'll take the transparency. Thank you, Hunter yes. Lawrence. That was that yeah. was a, that was a gimme, but like, good for Hunter though, because we were literally just talking about this on the one show yeah. that, you, you, yeah. that we did for Indy. Hey. It's like well, Hunter gonna get his fi- shit figured out. You want to know what I'm super pissed about? Go ahead. I put him in fifth in uh, RM Fantasy (laughs) and then uh, pulled him. Also, I noticed that RM Fantasy SX is now RM Fantasy SMX.com. There's a a URL we missed out on. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know. uh, Supercross Live might be Supercross Motor Super Motocross Live dot com. It's kind of like can Ricky. Go buy that up. It's kind of like Ricky every time he, every time he talks about Dirtworks calling it the SMX Track Crew, and yeah. I hear that every time, and I'm oh, like, Ricky, man. shut the hell up, stop. Uh, anyway, let anyway. them roll the sport, damn it. Um, also, it's been popping out on the interwebs. I think he actually came out right out of the horse's mouth. Uh, type two diabetes. Yeah, what's uh, I've heard that Hunter uh, Hunter Lawrence. Oh, really? It He's came a, from him. That's what somebody said. Yeah, I somebody know said on, somebody on a said Weej, that. Uh, a Weege interview or something. Yeah. That's shocking. Interesting. I would have to do some some looking, but that would explain a lot. It does, yeah. That's shocking to hear. Why do you say that? I asked when I heard the rumor, but I did. I, no one seemed to know for sure. Why do you say if that? If you're dialed on your diet, and I mean dialed, and you're doing blood work, and you're doing all this shit, and you're dealing with Epstein-Barr type things... You're fucking dialed. How do you oopsie your way into di- diabetes? See here, there's a misconception with that though, because diabetes at least type two, and I thought the two? same thing for type two. I thought the same thing for a long time. Like everybody's always associated diabetes with people who, oh, like you know, you can't handle your sugar and your diet shit, and like all you know with glucose levels. But apparently, like, and this would be something to have coach talk about. But a lot of like triathletes are type two diabetics. Like apparently, it, there it's more common for like very in shape guys that have really like high intensity workouts are more type 2 diabetes, and I'm not going to pretend to know all the... Does Justin have type 2 diabetes? I definitely I, I definitely don't have diabetes. <laughs> I have diabetics Di- in my family. Diabetes. But, but apparently uh, it's more it's more common. Me, at least. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, that makes a lot of sense, too, because there was a lot of comments like when he finally started having success on the 250, he was like, yeah, we got some things figured out with my body. Yeah, he so, said that he all the had- time. He had digestion other issues, digestive right? issues at that point. Because yeah, we can go back. Out. And he still has the digestive issues. I tell you what, though, man. Going if, out, if he's got type 2 diabetes, and he's obviously got the right people around him, he's got the money to do it. But I'm going to tell you this. If that's what they figured out is his issue, it, dude, that's going to be that's gonna be rough for the rest of his career. Cause, is like, it? Because I feel like it'd be easy. Type 2 diabetes, man? Because you know what you're doing beforehand. So, like, the for problem, example, when you, when you do, like, the insulin pump and stuff like that, yeah. like, you kind of fucking know what you're doing beforehand. So you can actually kind of trigger it to where you have more, you got a little more razz, or you got a little less in you. But the problem, though, is is that you're right. You're 100% right. And once again, I'm not going to try to articulate this as, like, I know the actual, like, ins and outs of Neither it. Neither of us fucking do. Let's yeah. talk. But, I like, mean, growing this would, up... This would be a good subject to have Coach talk about. Growing up, yeah. like, with If a he lot, would even want to... I bet he would. Well, not... I bet he... Coach would talk about it yeah. forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Growing up with a lot of people in my family that had type 1 diabetes, like going through all that, like you're, you're right if you're dialed. But here's the thing, though. You have to be dialed all the time, though. If you're off just a little bit, which we all know race weekends can be hectic, especially get to the Nationals. No Jets and Donuts, you're saying? No Jets and Donuts. <laughs> uh, if, he, if he misses anything, though, it could spike him really quickly. So you're right. If you are dialed, and I'm not saying Hunter's not. He's got to be super dialed. But he's got to be super dialed because if he's off just a little bit, it's going to be like the rough weekends that we've seen from him. So that's why I say that like and, and that it could be sense. tough. It could we, be tough. Because we've seen him do great, and we've seen him do like, eh. And, and like I said, Supercross, like this actually makes a lot of sense too why Supercross was a little bit 
easier for him even in the 250 days yeah and then you get to outdoors and it's like phew, yeah like it goes off the fucking rails so you think this is a long-term thing with him then you don't think this just came up i mean dude that I would think this is i think this make is a lot of fucking, going on for a while it would make a lot yeah. of sense it would make a lot of sense because if you're di- type 1 diabetic you're not going to miss that because like you're like on the edge of death if you have digestive tract issues it also leads to those other things yeah. too so yeah. it, yeah, it's interesting how this all shakes down. Maybe one day we'll have an interview with him and yeah, ask him some questions. I don't know. Hey, uh, when I see my best friend at Red Bull, I'll tell you this, though. I'll that makes a sure. seriously, it does make a lot of sense, though, guys. Like, it really fucking yeah, does. Yeah. If this is legit, it makes a lot of sense. And, and if he came out and said that, Good then for thank him. you for being thank transparent. You. He hurt his ankle in practice or lower fib or something. Yeah. Uh, and still raced because they didn't think he was going to race last night t- or Saturday night too. So mm-hmm. I think Hunter's got that. So thank you get... for the yeah. transparency. I think HRC. Hunter's got that. Yeah, and like to, we're talking about this, like damn, what a fucking bad dude for racing with diabetes. No That's... shit. And we don't have to sit here and question the stuff anymore. No. A la Tomac's ankle injury for the last <laughs> however many weeks. Yeah, yeah. Now we know why he like hasn't been great. Yeah. Yep. I truly so. think that he's he's the guy kind of guy Hunter Lawrence that when he's faced with a opportunity to rise to the occasion where he has to then he does really well and i mean if you look he's kind of got an out to just be a pussy then he will every time i mean if you kind of look at his whole mxgp career that pretty much just that's like on the nose and when he came here he was awesome too and when he yeah. came here and did the the designations it was it was fucking lights out and then well, well i don't know what happened then but it seems like even when like for example when we were iron man and he and deegan had it you know, yeah their their battle for the the championship when he didn't have to, he fucking definitely didn't. But if he was at a spot where he needed to ride the, rise to the occasion, he's he's able to do that. It's yeah. He look, he rode great the other night. He did. He no, rode great. He did. That whole shot and leading to start with was great. I mean, yeah, dude, he, he was wrote, building. He was building momentum before yeah. Daytona, fifth, fifth. Rode great at Seattle. Uh, a heat win. Heat win. Like a legit like, heat win. Just Can't take- him, this is put him in the same level as like Justin Cooper in our eyes now. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we we were talking yeah. we were talking about that within, which is like kind of what we expected yeah. from him yeah. anyway. Yeah. Um, and and I think so. he's going to be if he if he has everything if they can get this figured out where it's like consistent. I think that he ha- he's I think he's a better outdoor guy. Yeah, and I think that outdoors could even be a better step. But once again, though, if this is like the type two diabetes thing. That's that's rough. rough. Yeah, that is yeah. rough shit is to have to deal with. All right. Yeah. Not like. I'm, I'm asking. I don't know. Yeah. It. I mean, dude, it's it's definitely not a walk in the park. Like if you're having an off day. <laughs> right. Moving on. AP gets fourth, going three eight six. Kind of a quiet, quiet, quiet night, fourth. but rode well. I so. think. Uh, also victim of the red flag or the cross flag. He jumped on one lap. Yeah, well, so. him and No and Coop did. Yeah. Well, um, we'll, Ando did it twice, we'll, we'll get but. To this. Yeah, <laughs> white flag lap and checkered flag lap. Fucking Vince uh, Fools. Well, yeah, I, I got thoughts on that. We'll, we'll yeah, get to we'll, that. We will. Uh, Sexton goes 10 5 3 for fifth. Where, where was that? What was going on with that 10? I think he's just staring at that Star Truck. Hard. Or no, actually, he got. Oh, he stole it. Can we talk about that? Can we talk about well, the star yeah, yeah, thing? We'll talk about that in a second. But he got caught up in that AC situation, he did. though. He was so. like last. Yeah. He was like last. Yeah, the first one, yeah, he was caught up in that AC situation. Can we he talk was about, down there. Can we talk about the star thing for a second? Yeah, sure. You weren't here what last got? week to talk about Oh, you guys about talked it? about it? A little bit. No, I told well, him he that he was an idiot up. for saying it was Hurlings. Oh, well, I mean, Hurlings was there also. <laughs> sure. And I'm sure like an idiot because I agreed with him. Yeah, sure he was. I mean, uh, they both were. Can you? Sure he was. Because we were talking about how, sure how large my morning would would be walking okay. in and seeing Hurlings and Sex and just ripping motos Jesus. on star bikes together. The only thing, the only thing that I've heard is he rode that bike and he got off the bike and he goes, "I don't know how the fuck Eli goes so fast on this thing." We that's heard, all we heard. Complete we, opposite. Yeah, we See, that's all. Ricky that's all. said he. Ricky said he talked to him and said he liked it. Well, yeah, Ricky I mean, caught him in Tallahassee, like at the bank well, or I something. Mean, the guy, I mean. <laughs> No, seriously, Ricky was like, I know he was riding it because I was in Tallahassee and I saw him. Which, thinking about it this week, logically, it makes sense he went to KTM because he probably made a lot more money, money. in KTM. Yeah. yeah. But they weren't gonna it, was a, it was a money move, the in my fight, opinion. The fights he's having with that bike right now? I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. If he would have picked the star bike, though, somebody would have been on the outs. It wouldn't have been like the. It wouldn't have. He wouldn't have been in that with Eli, Coop, yeah, and yeah, Jacobs. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's. Why? They have a gazillion dollars. I no, there's no, no way there's yeah and there's no way no, Chase is gonna be on a team. Didn't want to ride for that little bit of money. Ferrandis yeah. is a prick when it comes to he's and now not he's going prick, to Husky, but he's a prick when it comes to money, which is he why is. he didn't want to continue to ride there. He could have. I didn't know he had the option. And now he's gonna go to Husky yeah. in 2025. Like, uh, like you don't he, like your Husky? He could have. I mean, look at any Austrian bike right now. Everybody wants every one of them dog shit. Husky just doesn't give a fuck right now. <laughs> uh, as far as the Chase thing. 
I mean, yeah, they got a lot of money, but there's no way I could have seen like Chase Coop and Eli Allen or anything. I, I think that whole thing is very interesting. I almost feel the KTM group looked at Coop and was like, "You're full of shit. Our bike's good." And now the defending champ comes over there and they're dropping their drawers to do whatever they can. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's got that WP suspension. Um, also on the TCD thing. Okay. True. There's photos of TCD stickers on Barsha's forks. Really? Riding. And then I, I did get a Snapchat from a gentleman that actually works at TCD with two gas gas cases in the shop. I can ask him. I know those guys really well. Yeah. Old Tim Bat. No, they're doing it. They're doing his stuff. I will. I will. Mm. I will. Uh, well, here I actually got the screenshot. I will I, ask I, the. I, t- I tweeted it out. So if anybody wants to go on, I will. Twitter, I will pose. I will pose the question then for you boys on Sexton. Then, um, does he go to Ducati in twenty six? Yes. Oh. Y- well, that's not where I was going with that, but like I know somebody asked that question, but like you be- you believe that? I mean, they're not the way it's, not it's going. going the, way, not, the way it's going right now. Well, then your boy Jet's not going to be on that team. Well, that's fine. Okay. Jet doesn't have an issue with his bike. He's going to MotoGP. We hear. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jet doesn't have an issue with his bike. No, he doesn't. I mean, he could stay at Honda for the rest of his career, and I think he's fine. I mean, here's the thing. Can you imagine Prado and Chase? <laughs> uh, what's his no- uh Sexton signed this KTM deal super early. Is it two or three years? I wonder if he has an option to get out of it. Te- hey, why don't you DM that same guy that responded to us and see if he knows what the deal, I, how long I, his deal is? Because I'm gonna, I think it's two. Because I'm gonna pose the question: If this continues to go south, which it's really weird, because he comes off of Indy. Uh huh. Come on, Sexton, right now. Yes, yeah. he came off of Indy, and I, t- I said this to you, like, damn, like Chase looks like he's because his speed was there too. Yeah, like the speed better. was there. He was great at Indy. Um. It's been good for a while. And then he goes to Seattle, and he was good. Should have won it, but you know, decided to stall it like ten million times. But then he goes, then he goes to St. Louis, and he's just like there, like not nothing all day hey, long. Do you? So there was an interesting comment, and I didn't put it together until we're literally just talking right now. Do you remember the kind of backhanded comment that was it? Dazzy made about the guys who were at Honda before. Oh, not yeah. properly developing that bike. Mm-hmm. So it makes me wonder if Chase and his dad, and this is nothing personal against them, but if they're not good at that side of things, and then they go over to KTM here. And mm-hmm. push in a certain direction. And they're mm-hmm. trying to push it in a certain direction, but they don't really know what they're doing per se. And, and that's a relative term. Yeah. But, and so they can't get that to work either. Then is this what we see the rest of his career? Is he's God, I hope jumping not. because he thinks the next thing is going to be better, and it's going to either be <laughs> when, either when in reality it's just him. Yeah, and, you know, he, and he doesn't know how to properly test. You and, know what the shitty thing whatever. about that is? Is like he's looking at that Honda going, yeah, man, that front end was unpredictable. But even even if you look at the way the summer went, but he was still really good, and there were times where he was matching Jet. But then you look at Supercross where the outright speed was always there. You're looking at that going. Man, I would definitely take that Chase Sexton over this Chase Sexton right now. And I understand he's third in the points. He's 20 back or whatever. So, like, hey, whatever. But I'm just looking at last year and I'm going, dude, I'll take the guy that would tuck the front with a 10-second lead over this Chase Sexton. Yeah. Any given I mean, moment. the thing is, have we really seen him this year uh, just we have that we haven't speed? Seen him. No, I don't think so. Not at all. That, I don't believe like so. Like he even had last year, let alone the next level to go with uh, Jet. Uh, no, because- there's, a, there's one question that will answer this. How many fastest qualifiers does he have? Yeah, that's exactly it. Okay. Yeah, and and because I think I think even even Jet would tell you, and he, he even said it the last round at the SMX round in in Los Angeles, that like when Chase wanted to go in Supercross, yeah. Chase Chase could match him all day long, and it wouldn't be a problem. Outdoors too. Yeah, and yep. outdoors. So like, and I have not seen that. I'll I'll be honest. If we get into next year and they're still struggling with this bike. There's going to have to be some hard looks in the mirror about him and his dad and being able to develop a bike, yeah, but, but right now, I will, like- I, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt right now because mm-hmm. there's not a single guy that is happy with that motorcycle. No. Whether that it be whether it thing. be white, whether it be red or orange, there's only one guy no, no, that Barsh seems... No, just happy with it. Since when? That's what He's they're ju- saying now. Sarcastic. Since last week? No, okay, well, I'm not. Oh, well, sure. because he TCD said- started doing a shit. He says he's so, fine since last week. So now sure. he's good. And he has been riding better. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, and Plessinger's kind of an oxymoron, too. Like, what, I don't know why he likes that bike, but... No idea. Because uh, they let him ride in the woods when he wants to. The but Mookie, 
can't Hates ride. It. Christian Craig Craig's just like Craig. calling Two it a year. Two of the calling best it a guys day. in the whoop section, arguably, and they can't go through the whoops on this thing. Christian's just calling it a day on the year. <laughs> yeah, he a hundred. He, I bet he goes to Triumph or something. I bet he don't even ride outdoors. If he can come back. Oh, he ain't come back. No. Who? You think he's just Craig? Done? No, no. He's gonna he's gonna come back for someone else. He's he's uh. Oh, he's riding his contract out. He ain't ever touched. He's that getting bounced. He's getting bounced from that team next year. I'm saying if his elbow thing. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. Elbows oh, are really I think hard like I think he is physically able to come back, but I think he's Mentally. also milking it a you little bit to get off that bike. Connection Honda. For sure, I could see that. You know, considering we talked about that last. We, year. You know what, we you think he goes to like the Phoenix deal. Yeah, well, I mean, Dylan, they're him basically swapping. They're swapping. Yeah, him, him and Mookie. Swapping. You know, I don't, the Craig, think, I don't think Craig's milking it. I think that he's just no. no oh, I, I think he's. I think he's. I think he's, he's, oh, I think he's dealing with shit, but he's like they're doing make a swapsies. Like Dylan's going to Husky in 2025, and Christian's going to go to the I, Phoenix. I think team. if things were going better, he was able to ride through that issue. But there was still enough of an issue there where he could be like, "Hey, uh, I'm getting this fixed." Can't hang it out fast and it, enough. And it's yeah. so unfortunate for Christian, and I said this when he finally like took the time off, that you look at how good he was on that star bike last year, and it's like, dude, he should oh, be yeah. easily be running close to the top five. But as far as Chase goes, yeah, I mean. Thank you for standing right in front of the camera to do that. Really, <laughs> appre- really appreciate you getting right in I, front of the camera to turn yours off. If they're, uh, what an idiot. If they're. If this is just going to be what it is at KTM, I want him to just – he's got to get out now. He's got to get out, like, within the next year. Hey, put him back on a star 250F, and he'd still be getting no, better results. No, we're not results. talking about Christian Craig anymore. We're talking about Chase. Yeah. Put him on a star 250F. Yeah, no shit. Like put him on a star 250F in the 450 class. That'd be fun. The way this is going, it would not surprise me by midsummer if we start hearing rumors of him signing with Ducati. Ooh. To be honest. Chase. I mean, dude, and Ducati already mapped their plan out straight from the horse's mouth. Like they already 26. put their pl- they put I mean, their plan if, out if, there. If Coop got ugly enough to get out of his contract, so can Sexton. Yeah, but I don't think Sexton has to get out. I think he's only got a two-year deal. Maybe he has three, but I think it's only two. And if it's only two, uh-huh. that's twenty-six. That's perfect. He'll sign with them here, guaranteed. Yeah. We'll, because we'll keep watching, sucks. but it's not going well. Nope. All right, uh, moving on. So, okay, here we go. Now we're gonna get into it. Barsha goes six oh, four shoot, ten I just turned my camera. Ah. Yeah. Here, I please, walk back, oh. please, please walk back. Please do not walk in front, in front of that of camera, camera again. There to, so we can. Okay. I was real fired up Saturday night. <laughs> yep. Let's. let's I bet you let's, were. So you're in this spot. When you're coming into a corner. I've never been teed up. Okay. So apparently, having listened to a few or things. Mitchell Harrison tried teeing me up once. Uh, Good job, Mitchell. Well, <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then I, I caught him sit. and almost beat him. <laughs> what? At Bow Creek. What? Mitchell Harrison? What was Mitchell on? A Super Mini? And you were on it, a this was like 85 days. You put oh, Cole at Battle Creek. I was Creek. about to say. In any era, you put Cole in Bra- at Battle Creek, and good luck beating them. I've seen I thought it. you were about to tell me, oh, yeah, Mitchell's on a 250F. Well, this, like, this, 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 this was 85 days. Oh, okay. 85 right, days. Right. 85 Not disrespecting days. your skills, bud. Not disrespecting okay. your skills And then Brian was sitting around a fire talking shit about me and didn't know my mom was at the same Hell player. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he also stole beer from Dave Doney, so it's Okay. Fine. Anyway. Um, what? Yeah. Stole a beer? Beers. Plural. Look, beers. Yeah, beers. Did you see? Oh, cool. He cooler hopped and stole two bush lights. Oh my God, can All we right. fucking stop talking about that? Whole twenty four pack, bitch. This is gonna be like a four hour show. Let's go. Fans love I'm, it. I'm trying to. Okay, <laughs> let's quit interrupting each other. Damn. Okay. Did you see his apology video on Instagram today? I no. think it's all sincere. Yeah. I think it's sincere too, but it was funny when I listened to it because I go, "Well, you really just went well." My bad shit happens without saying my bad shit happens. Like I mean, I also look. seen pictures I mean, of him after the race going over to Jet yeah, and talking to him. Oh yeah, no, him I've seen the videos like and man. everything. He yeah, was, like a man. He was, and he and apparently they all went over to the truck, the Honda truck afterwards yeah. too, because they were just like, we gotta, mate. Uh, he didn't mean to do it. No. Now I do question, and I did this Saturday night too. What the fuck was the exit strategy? Supposedly there was a line there, and everybody okay, keeps. I'll bringing, break this down well, for you. Well, hold on. Let me let me let me finish here. Everybody keeps going to the Dungey Stew incident, right? Of well, Jet turned down, blah blah blah, whatever. Okay, Jet needs to learn and again, track awareness. The, yep, track awareness. Barsha should have that track awareness to see that you were in a straight line. There was, there was nothing in front of you but Jet. And I understand why he was doing it. Him in the Freezy situation or Fucking whatever. Freeze. <laughs> freeze is always the thing. He, always I mean, in he was involved. It, it was in two things. He's always in his involvement. I mean, the, the fucking Red Cross was his fault. Like, damn, yeah. dude. But then stop. Every weekend. But at the same time, too, I just don't understand the exit strategy. If you're trying to cut to the inside to keep Vince behind you, 
just go around the inside but going 100 miles an hour in a straight line towards the exit of the turn because the if you go back to the dungeon thing because i saw somebody post a picture the dungeon stew thing that was like middle of the corner where Stu turned down and and dunge was coming up the middle of the corner this if you look barsha is headed at the end of the tough block coming out of the corner i mean you're not even gonna hit the berm bro so like racing incident whatever everybody's okay so we're cool we got two weeks off but at the same time what the fuck are you doing man light him up cole let us hear it well so I i'm talking <laughs> so race it it's a racing incident to me yep. you you've got jet lawrence is racing ahead uh so he's cutting down trying to get past whoever's in front of him His same same it's the same bad tendency then, that, that james used to do where he wouldn't be yeah i'm, get, I'm getting ride. into that that was that was gonna oh, be part yeah. of it so so jet lawrence is so used to being out front and cutting down james stewart was famous for this and he'd get run into all the time um, and there if anybody wants to be like, oh, Jet needs to learn how to ride better in the first couple laps, go back to the first main. Eli Tomac does the same lap, same same Shit. line on the same lap, basically. In all fairness, so there was both of them were in a line that was there, from what I understand. The Barsha line was an actual line correct. that guys were taking, and the Jet line was also an actual line. So Jet is racing forward in front yeah. of him. And Justin Barsha was racing behind him. He has Vince Freezy behind him, which we know who's going to run it in. He's beating him to the exit of the corner, and he's going to hit the end of that and apex it as hard as shit and go. Jet just happened to be in the middle, and by the time that he notices, before he switches his brain from behind him to in front of him, it's too late. Racing deal, man. It is. My other question, though, is... He was going to make the turn. It was a flat straightaway. Like, this isn't like we came off a jump or something. It was in the switchbacks. And? So, how is your head not looking? That's my that's my question. Justin's? I, yes. Because he is riding like this, and he is out of his peripherals, has a Vince Freeze fender in front of him. Yeah, first lap. Shit happens quick. First, and he's like, okay, I'm co I'm going to I'm gonna cover this guy. So, he's out of his periphery, yeah. covering the line. Look at right, you like this? <laughs> this He's is covering the line. He's <laughs> and like right as he switches forward, <laughs> Jet is turning down as he really puts his focus on the line that he's going on. And as soon as he sees that, he's grabbing front brake. He stops. He's right into him. Look, I'll just say they're yeah. they're both at fault. They're Jet, both at fault. Jet can't turn down that hard go, early go, in the main, and then Barsha. 80, I'm not gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'll go 60-40. I'll go 60-40. They. It was more Barsha's. Down to 70, 30. It was That's more bar It time. was more Barsha's fault. But once again, Jet still needs to have track awareness. Because you can't you can't cut down that hard at the beginning of the main, but also Barsha, you can't go. What about Tomac cutting down that? Everybody hard like being okay. a Stu guy, like Stu did the same shit all the time. He did. Like you can't you can't do that. Like it doesn't matter it how ultimately much. Ultimately, ended Stu's career. I mean, it yeah. kind of did because he was never the same after that A one. Yeah. I mean, my thing is though is, too, if you watch it, and I'll have to go back and watch it some more. But from what I've seen, when Jet makes that pivot, I mean Barsha's nowhere close to him. So like no, but that could have been I anybody under, else though too. I know, but I understand like track awareness or whatever too. But it's like okay, how much track awareness am I supposed to be looking? Because no, he's you doing, gotta he's you gotta anticipate a, that it's gonna happen. I I mean I guess, but he's doing a one eighty pivot in that corner, and when you when you go to do that, I mean, as soon as there, he pivoted, you there, you look, he hits the brakes too. Yeah, Jet hits the brakes. Yeah, he's, there, as I mean, soon as he goes, he's like, oh shit. Yeah. I mean, everybody likes to do the whole thing. Well, oh, when you when you have the 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 bike length or whatever, like you control what's going on. That's very true. But that goes all out the window when you're in the middle of a 450 Supercross main and it's the first fucking lap. Yeah. And look, you're in the pack. Like if you're out front and you got a little bit of gap already, I'm not saying Jet's more at fault. Barsha is definitely more at fault. Yeah. But Jet is also gonna have to realize if you're gonna get shitty starts. Another person I've seen this do the same thing all the time. Canard used to have this shit happen to him all the time. Yeah. Shitty track awareness. Like, you you have to anticipate the guys behind you of what they're doing. I People be like, oh, well, that's stupid. It's not fair. Nobody said it's fair. But when you're in the pack and you get shit, a shitty start, yeah. you have to be aware of what everybody's doing. Just like you anticipate the guy in front of you, what they're going to do, you also have to anticipate what the guy behind you is going to do. Because even if Barsha, that's not behind him, doing Mach 5 going into the apex of the corner, like, that could have been... And I'm not picking on him, but Cade Clayson, 
What if Cade's just trying to go to the apex of the corner and he's in the inside yeah. of him? Yeah. Same thing. It was more Barsha's fault. Yeah. I'm it, not it saying it just happened to be Barsha. It just happened yeah. to be Barsha. A- hey, look. And Fred. Because and here's Fred. my here's my question <laughs> to you. And Jack. If, as a, as if a that would have been Freddie Norn, if that would have been Freddie Norn, we're pissed. But we're not all up in arms yeah, as some of these other shit. people are this right now. True poor well, Freddie, but we're not giving a shit. Yeah, poor Freddie. Nothing against Vince Freeze. Yeah, but all right. I got two cents on this. But I hope Jet. I hope Jet's okay. He he put out a thing. From what I've read, he's good. All right, so two things on this, and first one is uh, tangent. So, at least, (laughs) right? The the little tangent I want to get into with is is, is with the broadcast, and not just this sport, but I I really noticed it with this sport is that everybody in this just says, "Well, obviously this, and obviously that," and every time I'm like, half the viewers at home don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and you're saying obviously (laughs) that you gotta you gotta describe it and give lay, lay it out there so the viewer at home can see what the fuck's going on, right? Now, something that neither of the three of you said about this is that when Justin came into the corner, he was on the front wheel. And when you're on the front wheel, Cole, what are you what are you doing? You're along for the ride, right? Well, yeah, that's what I said. Like, as soon as he looked up, he grabbed front brake, and that was it. It was done. He was over. It was all over. Once you're on the front wheel, you're, ho- you're hoping to make the corner at all. Well, yeah, you still you have no drag of the rear wheel. You'll have that energy of the back end just going through the air, mm-hmm. pushing you forward. Yeah, you not cram, like had, more, and yeah. you can't really let well, up. Well, now, now your yeah, front end's I mean, really squatted, and you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, now I mean, had Jet end. not be there, the rear wheel still would have been planted, and he would have... Pivoted I will say, done. though, you know, that... He would have still made the corner. Yeah, there was a lot of people like, oh, he wouldn't have made the corner. I'm like, dude, he would have made the corner. Would have been sketchy, for sure. But he was going to... He would have somehow pivoted inside the corner. 100%. The crazy thing to me, though, is is that I don't think I've ever visibly seen Barsha that empathetic yeah, we'll for see. something that he did after the fact. Yeah, because people, people were like... What was it? What was he doing? Yelling at him? I'm like, no, bro. He was like, holy shit, did no, I just and, do that? And, and I saw something too where Ali Stone, the manager over there, was like, Barsha, like, he came to me after the race and said he wanted to pull off. He felt so bad. Dude, he's even looking over there going like this, and like you could see his body language. Yeah. He, you could just see him going, oh, fuck. Barsha's got children now. That, that's what he, happens. He didn't mean to do it. No, All he right. didn't. Like I said, more Barsha's fault than Jet. 60 40, him. Jet still needs to have track awareness when you get a shit start like that. Plain and simple. Immediate reaction. I was motherfucking him, but I was cheering my ass off. Oh yes, this is exactly what I wanted. I uh, two things came to mind. I I even said championship got tighter when I when I said and I even our group group text. I said no fucking way. That was the first thing I texted to our group text. I was like no, because all I'm thinking of is he's holding the side. I'm like. Did he just blow his forearm out? Because all I'm thinking That's, is, I Jet thought, just blew his forearm out. Because he's going I, like this, and I'm like, oh my god. All I could think of was like, I had flashbacks to Tomac in Denver last year. Mm. And I'm like, wow, there, there that goes. And then when I saw it was Barsh, I'm like, oh shit. And then when I saw it again, I'm like, holy shit. When like, I he, saw the actual incident, I was like, damn. I was like, <laughs> shoes. Punch. Wow. For sure. Yeah. Um. All right. So Stu goes seven nine eight for seventh. Just there. Hey, he's just there, man. Yep. Uh. Jet goes two three twenty one four eight. Lucky it was a triple crown. Hey man, he hey, was lucky. Look, I have it in my notes here. The only person that can beat Jet is Jet. Oh my god! And we're still proving that point. So he would say that. He yeah. would say that. It's cool. It's I mean, fine. he's already been beat a few times this year, Bro, so like, getting I mean, beat is we, beat. We all keep going with the oh these rookie mistakes and stuff, and yet here we are. He not only a rookie, he has been the one beating. Not only himself. a rook, rookie mistake, then he gets center fucking punched on the last race of the triple crown. And he still got with an eight-point lead. With a rookie mistake. I mean, getting beat is getting beat. Plain and simple. Like, you can see, you can shake your head all you want, but it's factual. It's like, it's literally facts. I, it's I not mean, subjective or objective. It's, it's, it's I, literally I facts. Just go, I just still go, it's this good, his rookie year. It's only going to get better. Or it's just going to be the same shit every year. He's going to win titles, but he's never, he's not, he's never going to not deal with adversity. So Hold on, we're rather go around in a circle here. I want to talk about No, I mean, Jet. it's factual. This is why the whole 72 wins and perfect season thing is hardest. First off, this is why he's never going to have perfect season in Supercross. He's still young. Because of dumb shit like this. So You think he's going to grow and develop, right, as a racer here? Yeah, but he could also Forkner his ass out of this in, in yeah. like anything, You're riding dirt bikes, man. Anything can happen. Like, once again, we, we've all we, seen it. We, we keep talking about how we can't compare him to any other, Fortner. We, any other person in this position, which is factual. You know what I mean. But once again, riding a dirt bike, I always say this, dude, his bike could grenade on the face of a jump Barsha and it's all over. Barsha could into him and fucking yeah, break exactly. his arm. Yeah, you could get a shit star and stack all, him in the first all, turn. All of that stuff could happen. Yeah. So like, yes, would it be unfortunate and not be his fault? Of course. And we don't want to see that. We want to see all these talented guys live up to their potential. But this is why I always talk about is, is that why it is so hard to be the best for a very long time because even when you are the best amongst your peers, shit's going to happen whether you like it or not. Especially in Moto and Supercross. Exactly. Shit's going to happen. So you want to talk about the flag right now? We can talk about the flag. So 
I'm going to give you my thoughts on Go the flag. It. Go for it. So we got Jet after the race. And a lot of people are going to probably disagree with me. But you got Jet Sorry. after the race. Disagree with you about a Jet thing? Why going for my nip? Why going for my nip, man? Quit interrupting Things me. Things are sensitive these days. <laughs> uh, so Jet is pissed after the race about them not waving the flag. Okay? Yep. Can you do that? Bro, with a red cross flag, it's not meant to be waved. It has the red cross on it, so you can see the red cross. If the guy's up there waving the red cross flag, it looks like the white flag. And he probably motos for another lap. To me, yeah. However, I will back up the thought of, yes, it would have been hard to see there. The line drifted to the outside. You're focused on a rut going up a fucking 60-foot jump. You don't expect what? it at all. Huh? Yeah, you don't. I mean, you expected it maybe from the lap before. I don't know. But, uh... We have the technology. Maybe put some blinking lights up on the fucking finish Thank line you. thing. Thank you. Let's do that. But, again, it takes these situations like this. We've, when have we ever seen a situation like this before? You Never. guys have been watching Supercross Freak. for years. When have you ever seen anything like this happen? No, that was weird. Not that many dudes. So now, we learn about it. Of course, it's Vince Freeze. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it's, it, uh, Vince Freeze. Of course it's Vince Clayson. Freeze that puts the flag out, and he somehow his name's attached to it somehow. But uh, now let's see if any changes get done because of this situation and and see what happens from there. Or, or maybe our guys are going to be more aware from now on. I, I don't know. It's a learning thing for everyone in all First parties. First off, the guys are not going to be more aware. Second off, did you see Gypsy's take on this? Because he's, he's saying something very... You know who didn't jump on the Red Cross flag? Eli Tomac. Mm. BRM, baby. Enough said. Uh, so, okay, so, so <laughs> with him, he's got... Eli Domag did not jump on the red cloth flag, but everybody else did. Eli Domag did not jump on the cloth flag. <laughs> there's, there's. You got to pay five, attention to what's going on. Five dudes. How come Eli didn't jump on the red cross flag? Good man? for him. I'm glad he's, one he's guy an away rider, yes. was paying that, attention. You got to pay attention, man, because like here I'll all say to you, and I agree. But, but the, five other dudes, including you, and the, well, they were all locked into a battle. Put, yeah. put the red cross flag out at the entering of the corner so somebody has an idea what's going on. I agree with that. Yes. But don't I be agree with that. But once again, though. I'm not going to give everybody a pass on jumping on the Red Cross flag. I didn't say we had to give them a pass. They broke the rules. I have no problem with the penalty. Yeah, There's a I'm lot saying, of what I'm, I'm saying, saying. The rule is, can be adjusted. There Hell needs yes. to be a fix to it. Now there were several things brought up to me here. Number one, yes, the Red this Cross, issue can be fixed. The Red Cross sure. flag is red and white. Okay, we have red and white tough blocks. We have red and white gear. We have red and white bikes. We have red. And, and white. if you're waving that thing, it looks like a fucking white flag. Yes, so much which is why they see. don't mm. wave it because did you hear about that? They used to wave it, and you know what happened? People Dungy, jumped. Dungey jumped on one. Dungey did and that quite a bit. And they went and complained, and now you know what they do? They don't wave it, and mm -hmm. now they're complaining because they weren't waving it. So that's a whole conundrum in itself. It's on the finish line. Why does the finish line not have lights? Yeah. We have lights in other parts of the track for other jumps, but the finish line doesn't have them? This is fucking dumb. Yeah. So let's just check that off the list. Second off, this is a prime example for in-helmet communication. Ricky was big on pushing this. This too. Is, is that a your prime solution? example for it. Everybody's been saying this for years. I mean, they tested they tested this at the Nationals 10, 15 years ago. Michael Lessie tested it. Monster yeah, Cup. but yeah. the technology now is better with those Cardo units and yeah, stuff like here's, that. Here's here's the thing coming from and and you also should know this because you are a NASCAR guy, but it's kind of the same thing with the pit boards. Like a lot of guys would be for it in the beginning. And then they would get to the point that people would be talking to them all the time, and they go, "Shut the fuck up." Well, that's yeah. between the mechanic and the rider to and, say, "Don't fucking talk to me." And a yeah. lot of, and that's the thing though. A lot of people would get annoyed though because you say that, but if you're the mechanic and you're trying to relay a message, you say, "Don't talk to me." There's a lot of guys that don't have that self control and they'll just keep yapping away. Like I've listened, I've listened to Max Verstappen scold his race engineer, "Shut the fuck up, stop talking to me," and all he's trying to do is help him, and he keeps talking to him, and he's yeah, like, "Dude, I'll be honest." Don't give a shit because of this. Yeah, because right you're here, not racing though. This right or, here is a or prime it's prime example. Is this or, you guys' a solution right now? It's or, not my solution. Or you have it's not even between the mechanic and the rider. It's the race directors or whatever that are in the tower and they put out a message, red cross flag, finish line. Every fucking rider on that track hears it and they're in yep. intercom. Yep. One yeah, guy. Any other solution? Justin, you got a solution no. for this? 
other solutions. Well, that was my I solution, mean, there yeah. should be lights on the finish line jump if we have them on all the. Yeah. I'd say just literally put the put the red cross flag at the entering of the corner, so somebody has an awareness that yeah, something's that going on, and they too. don't even have to go that far. So this is there's a not a flagger there though. This is something, but there should yeah. be. This is yeah. something else they talked about too. Is like there wasn't even a yellow flag prior to it to sing signal them, hey, pay attention, something's going on. I mean, it literally was just that flag yeah. up there uh, on top of they're waving the white yeah. checkered. We, like the timing was a abundantly about, yeah. terrible about 10 years ago when the wheels on the ground situation became relevant at the nationals they used to literally put lights on the faces of every jump uh-huh lights are on wheels on the ground you leave the, you leave the ground you're gonna have an issue yeah we figured out a way to do that at every national track for a year which is incredible it yeah. is very incredible like how the fuck did you guys do all that yeah. but yeah yeah it's just or we can just chalk it up and look at it as like, hey, it's one of those things that's part of our sport. I think that's true, but I have an actual solution. What's your solution? Yeah, let's hear it. So I'm big about not just bitching, just a bitch, and having figuring out a fucking yeah. fix, right? Now, for me, the fix, Piggy's backs off of a new change for us this year with the green on the, the triple class mm-hmm. leader, which I think is amazing for our sport. I mm-hmm. really think it's, for mm-hmm. if you're in the stands or if you're on, on the TV at home, unless you're one of us is watching real close, like, most people don't know who the fuck is leading at the in the race at the track, right? Okay, well that's on the triple clamps. Now you tell me what happens if you have a bar pad, the ends of it light up yellow or red when there's a caution or a red flag. There was talk of that too. Yeah. That's a real easy thing to implement that cha- changes a lot of shit because now you you don't really even fucking need the flaggers on the track because it's right there on the yeah, bar pad. Yeah, because we know a lot of flaggers don't give a shit. Well, it's very difficult. I I was a flagger a few times and. When I break my arm or whatever, I still go to the track and just flag and make 20 bucks or whatever it is. But uh, this is a great way for us to grow this because now you have an additional safety feature, right? And you ha- you can have spotters upstairs that are triggering it. I don't know how they do the stuff at the triples with the with the lights and the, whatever master pools, families involved with that stuff. But I think it's a bad, it's like a, almost like another transponder looking thing that has the battery and stuff in it. And then... There's just two wires that run to the little light things. So realistically, yeah, I mean, it's no different than the Cardo solution. Pick, pick it, pick a solution. Do you want somebody to tell you in your ear? Or do you want a bright light in your face? I, I don't want it. anybody to tell me because I need to see it immediately. Because for me, for someone to tell me if I'm Chase and I'm coming around the corner, they're like, "Oh, uh, Chase." Uh, uh, by the time you're there, it happens in a half of a second. But if a bright red light flicks on, you see it yeah. most likely. I like, maybe, I like the idea a lot actually because you could put it right on the triple clunk triple clamp there so you don't really have much more than what you already got because you already got it for the because every bike has the leader lights yeah. every single one mm-hmm. so you already got the battery pack and stuff there one wire with one more led thing yeah. it's got to be on the bar pad for me because yeah, bring like in, i bring an led light up nah, there the but, pads, but the bar pads spin and will fall off. yeah you but where, where are you gonna ends though because it's, it's got to be real visual right? yeah and i don't know where they're gonna put it because you got a kill switch an electric start button a fucking I mean, launch button a I fucking mean, nitrous button there, a fucking a turbo yeah. charger <laughs> <laughs> like all these I'm fucking saying, buttons if you look over there a button on, not a button that, ignore the grips but you, look over there on that bike if you just put it on the triple clamp above the uh stem nut and below the bars there, like when you're riding, when that lights up, that LED, you're going to see it. No, hey, because so when I'm riding, I'll do I'm not under- fucking seeing that unless I'm sitting on the back of but the seat come, coming around the corner. But it'll come in your periph. So it I'll, will come in your periph from down there. I'll do one even further. Okay, go ahead. Uh, there's a helmet company that we were working with at Tucker Power Sports before okay. th- that all went underground. Okay. Oh, God, I forgot what that company was even called. But in the helmet... And it would take, this was a whole lot of theoretical because you'd have to get all the helmet companies on board or whatever. But it was for street riding and it was connected to the GPS system, which all these fucking bikes have anyway. Yeah. And if you were riding down the road with your GPS on and there's a left hand turn coming up right here in the chin bar, kind of in your periphs, it would blink left, blink Mm -hmm. right. And if there were cops like connected to your ways, cherries and berries would light up and it was kind of right up in your periphs. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to figure out what that helmet was called, but look it up it, it, and is, something like that would be cool. But again, it's it's getting that's all these manufacturers. The, that's on board. a lot of stuff in the helmet. Like I said, the, the it's getting all these manufacturers yeah, on board. I don't board, want any so. weight on my on my head. Yeah, the light the light on It'd the be like on half the bike, a gram of a light. I mean, it's a, yeah, but you got to have a transmitter so they can turn it on. Like there's if you got a Bluetooth or wireless signal yeah, off I, the whatever's already there to run the lights on the fork. It's not it's not a terrible thing. Like I said, the, the one little thing about this song, sorry to interrupt no, you. Go for it, go for it, go for it. I haven't ridden a brand new electric bike yet, but mm-hmm. I've seen a bunch of them, especially like, for example, uh, Suron and uh, what's that real popular Stark. one? Stark. 
and they already fucking have an electric bar pad. Yeah. It's already there. Yeah, their monitor's built into their bar. Yeah. So yeah. guess yeah, what? Yeah, you yeah. already got all the shit right I, there I, anyway. I like all of that. I, I'm for any of that, I'm just I'm not on board with the whole headset thing. I think that everybody thinks it's good in theory, but it's it's a lot of guys would bitch about it right away. The delay is the tricky part for me because if I'm coming around the corner, like the, it has to happen, and they have to decide to red flag it and have to communicate it. Like that could be ten seconds. I just have a, I just have the feeling that a lot of guys, especially if you're locked in a battle and you got somebody talking in your ear, it's going to distract you because now your brain's going to start going to the voices in your head. And in 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 car racing or truck racing, mostly car racing, it's a lot different just because you have so much more ground with your surroundings of what's going on. If you make one lapse in judgment out there on a supercross track and somebody's talking to you and you're leaving the face of a triple, huge problem. Like that's a, that's a fucking issue. I don't want to hear it either as no. a racer, but let me tell you what would be really funny, Cole. Oh, I'd be fucking with my riders. Justin's my rider. Yeah, imagine Cole riding around and Justin's yapping in his ear the whole time. Or <laughs> Justin's out riding and he's getting ready to go off the face of a triple, and I go, uh. yeah. <laughs> you know? I could definitely, I could definitely see a privateer just like. Dead last. I mean, you got Rod Bell's mechanic or something. Oh, or, mechanic or, or, just or fucking car, with him every time. Or oh. Carnell's mechanic or just something. A, just every time. Oh, man. That's or just, awesome. But I like all... <laughs> off, the, off the whoops. Oh, my God. All Can right. you imagine like 30 minutes into a national moto and your mechanic's just fucking with you? All right. Let's... Uh, you get Jim Holly in there? Like, oh, yes. God. <laughs> let's, I got Japanese. Let's, uh, let's blast through some of these. Yeah, here, we got... Going we're long. going over uh, the time. Blaster. What did Champion Tool, tool Stores just say? Did you DM Champion them Champion Tool Storage mm-hmm. is... Are they listening live? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. weird. Just, you just spoke that into existence, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I sure did. Uh, don't Justin, call me bud, pal. <laughs> don't call me pal, bud. <laughs> it says... Don't we call can me ma- bud, dickhead. I don't know what you said, but it says we can make that happen. I don't know. I don't know either. Anyway, uh, oh, I think they had a thing of this really i don't know anyway right uh, justin cooper goes nine ten nine for ninth lit kit lit kit not yeah. only well, not only lit kit but once again in time practice just yeah fast. Heater. Hey, got out heaters front, got out front and learned that pace like yeah. bro heaters man first oh, man he looked he, really good too they didn't crash right no he was, just kind of faded it, or was that last week he was out front and he crashed wasn't yeah it wasn't seattle I think it was. I think it happened in the triple crown. I think you're right. Oh, he did crash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he bounced off the wall by yeah, the mechanics. Yeah, area. Yeah, 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 yeah. But dude, I don't. So he was in the mix. Yeah. Man, yeah. I know he used to do this like every now and then in the 250 days, but I sometimes don't know where this one lap heater speed comes from. Fast as fuck, boy. Dude, it's wild uh, too. I know why. I know why. Oh, boy. Justin Cooper is having all this speed because he debuted with the 191. It's also because his head right, tilts to the All left. right, here well, we go. Uh, it's just wild to me, man, because like Jet at the end of that that practice, like dude, Jet is hustling, and then he goes. One thousandth slower than him, and you're jet. You could tell Jet's just like fuck this. Like this kid is not like he's not going faster than me. But it was just, just it's impressive to me that like his speed was that good when yeah. you have Jet out there hustling to try to beat your time. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I, going back to Jet though, but I watched that fast lap where he put in like a second or Dude, whatever. He was so sketch though. Man. He made mistakes and was still that much faster. I think his mistakes though, like that's the thing. He overshot something. Like, like it's his natural things. talent that pulls him out of that. Like he's like, oh, I'm just gonna make this work. But it does it does show though that when he want when he's actually pushing for like the fast laps, he's not. Smooth. What really amazed me was how he stuck that bike before the mechanics area. Oh yeah. Go back and watch that. He did, he comes off that double and it just fucking. Well, you know that Honda it. turns on a dime. So. Yeah. Uh, all Didn't right. Didn't tuck the front end. Shane goes. Back, out the back of cor- the corner of the seat, right? Do what? When he when he landed off that coming into that that flat corner with a little berm right before the mechanics area, he kind of sat off the back left of the seat to get around there, right? I he, I don't. He, it looked normal to me. He just kind of landed in the in the pocket. I don't know if he runs a seat hump or what he runs, but just landed Trash. and went. All right, uh, Shane goes 12, 11, 7 for 10th. Shane just hey, kind of... Shane, hey, Shane was talking about that mud race speed, Shane, and he think, had it in that third main. I think Shane has accepted that this is just where Shane's at, and Shane's cool with that. We made, hey, some, we made some improvements to the bike. Like, that, that third main was good. Yeah. I looked up there, saw his name in fifth or so, and I was yeah. like, hey, th- this is who, who he was this talking about. This is who about. he is. <laughs> this is what he was talking about. Uh, Ando goes 4, 7, 19 for 11th. I think after the the red cross flag, his night was just done. Yes, he is just kind of. Did you hear my con- my TLR oh, tinfoil yeah. hat? You hear the tinfoil hat? Did no, he show? didn't listen no. to the show last no. week. Obviously, no. he is throwing the rest ah. of the season. Ah, kind of the way he his, felt when he was at Husky ah. to get out of his Cowie contract to go ride Triumph next year. Hey, one oh. step further, the Triumph compound is in Georgia. 
Yeah, dude, a there. stone's throw away from Club MX, they, where he has been yeah, putting yeah. himself yeah. lately. They are that Triumph team too. Over the GPS is killing it right now. They are. We've watched that. We're you know, because we'll they got a title sponsor. Here. We'll get some of uh, that in a sec here. Yeah, I mean, you know, if he's just throwing throwing it away to go to that Triumph team, man, Prado's just going to be all by him low, his lonesome over there. At oh no, the the big green claw. Oh yeah, is having big discussion. Well, hopefully that discussion does not with involve the Deegan Danger Zone. Did you really just pump that out there? The big claw wants him bad. Are you are you allowed to say the that? The claw out loud? wants him on a green bag. Are you allowed to say that? Out loud? Michael Lindsay's been blowing it all over Vital. No. We will talk about that. Gotta hope not. We'll, ta- we'll talk about that in the mi- in the in the in the, the Japanese complete want somebody good again. Right. Right. Regarding yeah. regarding Anderson, before we move on, something that really bugs me about the triple crowns that we mentioned in Anaheim one uh, wrap up is that if you win a main in the triple crown, nobody fucking remembers it unless yeah. you win the overall. Like, hey, we can't have those stats. We don't. The AMA can't keep track of all that. I mean that. Boy, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean they're still whatever. But they're nobody still here using remembers. the same timing and scoring that Jeff Stanton used. The same thing is though that nobody Six here times. remembers that he, Jason Anderson won a main this year, but it was at a trip crown. And when right before Eli Tomac won this weekend, Eli Tomac won a, won a main in a triple crown, and nobody gives him any credit for that. And that's nope. bullshit. Nope. Yep. It's our sport in a nutshell. We don't give a shit. <laughs> well, yeah, our sport's we can blame the AMA, but it's, ways, it's a lot yeah. bigger than it's us too, a right? Lot. So I mean, we're all pretty. Messed up too, I guess you could Yeah, say. and I mean, you know, if you're around the sport, you're pretty fucked up somehow. I'm fine. No, you're not. <laughs> Why? Because you're you. Well, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, uh, so Kenny uh, puts a rock through the radiator, or something through the radiator in the first one. Has uh, to have the someone's back light. fender. Goes 18 13 5 for 12. I had the biggest figure skate moment I've ever seen in my life. Woo! <laughs> Did you guys think that when he was like shaking his his leg off the bike in that rhythm section that it was getting sprayed with coolant that was burning him? Is that what that was? Honestly, about? no. He hit a kicker and he was trying to stretch it out and get over that. And thing. I was just kind of laughing the whole time because <laughs> all I saw was the back angle when Jet was coming through, and I just saw Kenny go like this, and I'm like, is Kenny trying to be a figure skater these well, days? I saw. Like well, I saw him get a, he got a little cross rutted and then hit it. And then it started kicking him forward, yeah. like reminiscent of his crash. Oh yeah, you know one. his butthole puckered. He yeah, was like, yeah, oh god, not 2018. Out, and then. And then he saw it was smoking. And he just went VRM'd it. Then he got on the new the, or on the second bike, and the second bike the brakes didn't work. Uh, mm-hmm. The motor was different. I can't remember what else they said. There was a whole bunch of stuff. So, that was so they gave him it. Shane's bike. Yeah, something like that. Benny <laughs> uh, goes thirteen, twelve, fourteen for thirteenth. Hey, upward trajectory do, here. Do you want to give it to him? No. Is he owed an apology yet? No. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. He's got to make it the whole season. Uh, I don't know what he's getting apologized for, but I'm giving props for sure. Well, Justin said he was a rich kid that didn't need that ride, and <laughs> we all said that yeah. he was going to DNF and not make it through very much of the season, oh. and we did not have high hopes for him. And then yeah. Tevin Tapia inserted and, his and Tevin opinion. Tevin Tapia was backing him up, said we were yeah. dickheads. But I don't even understand that because like, I don't think Tevin and Benny are even friends. Apparently they're best friends. That's weird. They do karate in the garage you got, together. <laughs> Never mind. You think they anyway. read good housekeeping? Anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway, Chiz goes 15, 14, 12 for 14. Didn't have to Damn go to the, I needed him in 15. Did not have to go to the LCQ this time. Nope. Colt Nichols goes 11, 20, 11. Did have to go dude. to the LCQ. Went through the LCQ. Kind yeah, of. Props. He's, there. He's here. Mitchell Good looking Old, dude. Mitchell Oldenburg goes 14, 21, 13 for 16. Doesn't want to ride a 250F again. Nope. Yeah. He's not. Hey, how, about, he's how, off. how about when he cased the shit out of that and everybody thought it was mint? Yeah. yeah. That was, yep. That was a, that was a hefty Do you want to know the best thing? He didn't jump that jump all day, and he went, yeah. So when I got that hole shot, I was like, shit, I got to jump this now. Otherwise, I'm going to get past. He goes, and I did not give it enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'm trying to jump that thing for his lap. I mean, that's just, that is the level of crazy that all these guys are that I'm just like, man, this is why I will never be that good at moto. Because for me to go out of track the first lap of a race in front of everybody and be like, you know, I haven't jumped this all day. We should hit this. I, this have, a uh, I have experienced that before. You've done that? Uh, I yeah, for you so it was the it was the big ass jump after the ski jump at Redbud. It used oh. to be a little smaller, but yeah. I was on an eighty. Yeah, and did wait. Jump. You're talking like the triple up, the uphill triple. In the yeah, back? it was smaller. Okay, where eighty fives were jumping it. Okay. Oh, this was a long time ago then. Yeah, and uh, yeah, dude, I didn't jump that thing all day, and I was like fourth on the first lap, and the dudes all in front of me did it, and I just yeah. Right off that thing. Kind of looked like Matt Wyman there for a minute. <laughs> hey, what, did you, what did you What did you try to jump it on? Oh, I made it. What, what, what were you on? A CR eighty five baby screamer. Oh, okay, this is a long time ago. Then. CR eighty five screamer. Back back when I was really P- PR two head on my old 07. Oh wow, Chris Durham. <laughs> I really thought about jumping. Hey, that. you want to know a good story about the eighty five days? Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead. So your boy gets so on the bike one day. 
This is a very long section. And it's it's vibrating a lot more than usual. <laughs> and I'm said. like, Dad. Wow. Are the, uh, the motor terrible. mounts loose in this thing, or what's the deal? And he's like, no, man, I think everything's good. Turns out I get hit at Baja, cylinder fucks up, and and it took a chunk out of the cylinder. <laughs> so On I, the inside? No, like the header pipe where it went in, like kind of a freak deal. Oh, so I pulled the other bike out of the truck, went and rode that. Anyway, long story short, my dad put a 105 cylinder on it and never told me. And I didn't. Sick. I couldn't even tell the difference. <laughs> Legend. And then we'd go to Battle Creek and race, and we were in like 85, 9 to 13. And good old days. I'm not gonna call people out, but certain people you were there. Should. Certain people there were there racing. You really should. And yeah. we were going down the back straight, Let's neck and it. neck, and this bike fucking pulled me <laughs> like I was standing still. And that's when we knew 112s were legal in 85, 9 to 13. <laughs> you know, you know what's this story? Kind of sounds like a person would do this. Kenny Bass. <laughs> Uh, or Matt Lyman. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Matt did get caught. I I can I can attest that Matt's eighty fives were just modified. Super minis, on the other hand, they were were one fifteen. <laughs> pretty pretty maxed out. One fifteen. We well, were pretty maxed out. Well, who protested him that one day? Dude, there were people that protested him when he was in the... Mike Seeley's dad protested him one time at Battle oh, Creek. Is that why he's got class. the Mike Seeley beef? I'm like, oh my... Yeah, because his dad's like, he's got a 725 kid in that thing. I'm like, what? I'm like, it gets on a 252 banger and we're on a stock 250F. But those minis, though, the 85s were just, you know, some cylinder work. But Anyway, I rode an, 80, an actual 85 for the rest of the time being. Oh, That's you should have rode a 112. I should have had a badass 112, but I always sucked on modded bikes. I was better on stock ones. All right. Uh, Justin Hill goes 2115. No He's one cares. back. Game for 17. No one cares. He's back. Back he, making man. smoked him. They are pissed at him. Everybody's pissed because he was a terrible lapper the other day, and somebody said something to him, I guess, and he was like, I don't care. <laughs> he yeah, was Justin like, meet Hill. me at the tough blocks. Yeah. Justin Hill damn near got cleaned out like yeah. hard by Aaron, Aaron Plessinger. That's what happens when you're an Give asshole about space. getting lapped. Yeah. Uh, for Jeremy Hand goes 17, 18, dude, 16 for 18. Dude, Jeremy Hand job just doing what he does. Jeremy doing Hand is does. just putting it in mains, man. Dude, he's good. He's he good. Did. I didn't realize uh, how solid he was. Oh, yeah. Vince Freeze freezed. The, Dude, there uh, were a lot of incidents last night. <laughs> <A lot of laughs> <incidents. laughs> Free, freeze Lots just he freezed all over that whole I entire mean, race. He caused Jet just getting fucking right. My racked. buddy hates him almost as much as JT. He was literally texting me. He's like, This fucking guy, every time, wait till we get to the mains. Guaranteed something will happen because he can't not go a race without something happening. And lo and behold, <laughs> lo and behold, he causes <laughs> Here we like, are. like inadvertently causes the cross flag controversy. Yep. You can just write a movie around Vince's life. Yeah. And then just he anything. just uh He's just there and, just, and causes he's, almost he's the death of Jet. He's always been this way, man. He's Not always been this way. It's 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 a scripted way this goes. You Vince has got to have a villain. Vince is AI, been, dude. Vince yeah. has been this way ever since his days in the B class, man. He yeah. has always been a jackass. Vincident is the greatest fucking term I've ever heard. I think though, we got another Vincident around here. It's just good stuff. Lots man. of incidents. Uh, Cade Clayson, nineteen sixteen eighteen for twentieth. Unless he made the main. Freddie Norin, twenty seventeen twenty. I I had a note that he crashed in the whoops. I think in the first main. I'm sure he <sighs> crashed Freddy. more than that because he's. Freddy. Oh, he did. I saw him laying there. And AC goes DNF twenty two twenty two. So does anybody think that that was just big announcement coming out? I was about to say. Oh yeah, yeah. he's that's that big big announcement coming. Is it that announcement or is an announcement that he gives it another go with a different team? No, he's done. I think it's that announcement. I mean, we all knew, we all knew, but I think this big announcement next week. I think this really like put it over the top. We'll touch on this. Yeah, I mean, when when that news drops, we can talk more about it. But, man, I really wonder how his trajectory would have went if he would have got away from Kawasaki. Uh, Really good. Probably would have had a bunch of titles by now, to be honest with you. Yeah, maybe. So It's just I, a bummer, too, because, like, when that happened, and and I, I, I can understand why it did, but you could see the frustration in, his, in, in him, like, when he's realizing, like, that, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm injured again. Yep. Because he was yeah. like he was like throwing his hands around, and I don't know if he like stomped his leg that it like wasn't fucked up, but he just like you could tell you could visibly be like, yep, nope, that was we. He's got he's got to get ankle. Bruised. We're like it's hurt. We literally watched the last moment of his career. Yeah, at that point. And, and it was no, just, he's, he's done. He's done. It's just very heartbreaking too because it was uh, his mechanic that he was real tight Shanty, with last yeah. race yeah, so, before he goes to NASCAR. Yeah, what's like? Do you do you know the story on that? What's up with Shanty going to NASCAR? Like, what's his gig going to uh, be? So, know? I don't know, but Mario Tessa is a guy that worked in the amateur race shop. He mm-hmm. was, like, wrenching on Drew Adams shit and was, like, amateur support mm-hmm. guy. Um, he actually left two or three weeks ago, and he's working for one of the Reddicks. Oh, nice. Hmm. Um, the 45 car. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, that's a JGR umbrella kind of car, oh, and yeah. I would imagine an opportunity opened up, and he that's was like, dope- yo, Shanty, you want this deal? I'll yo, put a word in for you. That's a dope deal. That was kind of like when Derek Rankin went to, uh, did the IndyCar shit. 
a couple years ago. Well, and that didn't last. Yeah, he Still, did, but I mean, that's a good uh, opportunity. Yeah, that was kind of a shit show for him. He was talking about that not too long well, yeah, ago. Yeah, it's a little bit of it's a little bit of a bigger deal when you start going to four no, wheels. No, no, there were some other things that were a shit show around that. That you know, it, it's it's kind of like what we learn with all this stuff as we dive more into it. The shit show does not just apply to Supercross. Oh no, of course not. Oh, so, no. there's just more no. money. There's just, just more yeah, money. We're in that just world. stuck in a fucking box. Yeah. So anyway, all right. That's been or your beep, four, that's been your, that's been your 450 race recap brought to you by our friends at Gutterworks. Always well hung, like Cameron Sackadoo. Sacker. 